Hello friends, here we go again with another edition of Children's Church Live from the Secret Hideout. Yes, it is. Well, <laughs> thanks for tuning in today. Uh, I'm still missing some of you, seeing some of you guys at church. However, however, however. <laughs> church is open. Woo! <laughs> And I'm seeing some of yous, and I'm thinking I'll be seeing some more of yous soon, Josiah and Kendall, Chelsea and Clayton. I thank God for you guys. I always love seeing yous. And maybe some other of yous come later, and I missed you. Well, soon I'll see more of yous, I'm hoping. And we'll be keep doing this anyway. Hey, I got a few more uh, of your decoded secret messages. Good job, Dan Yvette. Yeah. What else? Uh, I'll get a surprise out to you guys soon. And if you want to send me your address, and if your parents uh, are okay with that, then I'll send you mail too, probably like a, a test or something. I know how you guys like my test. Hey, you know what? I got a card from Jamie. Thanks, Jamie. And... Uh, she said she likes the presentation, and that's pretty cool. And for the rest of you guys, if you like the presentation, I guess you do. You keep tuning in, but uh, if you press the like button, I'll know you like it. And if you want to make a comment, then I'll know whether you didn't like it or what you liked about it or something like that. So anyway, back to Jamie's card. Thanks, Jamie, for the cool card. She even sent me pictures of her little chickie. <laughs> little cutie. You're supposed to be zooming in on this here, George. But you're sleeping. Sleeping. A couple more here. Here's Jamie with her little chickie. Her name's Ireland. Nice. Thanks, Jamie. And thanks for tuning in. Well, uh, I guess before we get started, uh, I want to say hello to some friends and send a great big hug going out to, uh, let's see. Kaylee and Riley, what in the world? Him again. <laughs> oh, excuse you. He's got a little note here. How you doing today, huh? Yeah, nice. <laughs> Fancy paper. What? I heard you were talking about ducks. Exodus. <laughs> oh, yes. Goose <laughs> Exodus. <laughs> The history of the Israelites in slavery in Egypt. <laughs> Anything else you gotta say before you fly the coop? You always wanted to be a carrier pigeon? <laughs> well, carry this message with you. Tell Miss Jill I'll be home for supper. We might be having duck. <laughs> Exodux, what in the world? <laughs> Boy. Hey, you ready for this little gracious greeting? I think you are. Here we go. Good morning, young people ready to make your exodus. How about that? Good morning, young people ready to make your exodus. We'll make sense of that in a little bit. But before we get started, I'd like to pray. Um, Jesus, I certainly do need your help. Uh, in presenting the things that you have for us to to hear and learn and understand today. So may it be so. Um, help the young people to to hear, not just hear, but uh, to understand and that they would apply those things in their life. And may it be for the glory of Jesus, Father, I ask you in Jesus' name. Say amen. Amen. Well, let's do a couple songs here. Help me out, friends. I need... I need your help, because without you, whew, it's just a, a racket. Will you think you don't sing very well? Well, it doesn't matter, because to God, who has perfect hearing, perfect pitch, he understands every note perfectly, perfect timing, perfect tempo, perfect diction, he hears every word that we say, and he speaks very clearly. No, he has perfect diction. So either way, it's all like a, a joyful noise when we send it up. So send up a joyful noise. How about help me out with this one? Uh, how about the Old Testament books of the Bible? <laughs> Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, 
Numbers and Deuteronomy. Joshua judges Ruth, first and second Samuel, first and second Kings, first and second Chronicles, Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther, Job, and Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Song of Solomon, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations, Ezekiel, Daniel, Hosea, Joel, and Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk, and Zephaniah, Haggai, Zechariah, Malachi. How'd you do? You did pretty good? I thought so. We'll all learn on one of these days. Speaking of the Old Testament books, let's do um, the New Testament books while we're at it. Can you? Do you know them? We will all soon. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, Acts, Romans 1, and 2 Corinthians. My favorite part, ball, ball, bomb, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, 1st and 2nd Thessalonians. Ball, 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 1st Timothy, 2nd Timothy, Titus, Philemon, Hebrews, and James, 1st Peter, 2nd Peter, 3 Johns, Jude, and Revelation. What's 3 Johns? 1st John, 2nd John, 3rd John, Revelation. Good job. Let's do one more yet. Um, how about this one? I've decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. He gives me hope for each new day. I'm gonna follow Jesus. He guides my path all along the way. I'm gonna follow Jesus. I will go wherever he leads. I'm gonna follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. <laughs> I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. No turning back, no turning back. No turning back, no turning back. No turning back. <laughs> Good job, guys. Thanks for helping, singers. Sing out. It's a beautiful thing. I know I can't sing very well, and I can't play the guitar very well, but you know what? I know I'm not perfect. One of these days, maybe I'll be. But for now, we're just doing, my brother Jeffy would say, you got to run what you brung. If you came to the races, you just had to, that's all you brought, so you had to run what you brung. Yeah, okay. Really, man, he's out there already. Remember our prisoners stuff? I know that was some weeks ago. And uh, have you ever heard it said, history repeats itself? Well, we'll talk about that stuff. Last time we were together, we raced through the Old Testament. Old Testament book of Genesis. We almost ran right out of my shoes. <laughs> we were talking about creation and generations. Six days of creation and 23 generations. One generation being when parents have children who grow up to be parents who have children of their own. <laughs> parents who grow up to have children that grow up to have children of their own. That's like a generation. Yeah, okay. And uh, we briefly spoke of Adam, Noah, Abraham, Jacob, Joseph, and a whole lot more. And you can go back and check out that one was uh, beginnings and generations if you missed it. So the Old Testament is history written for our instruction. 
as an example for us, it says in the New Testament, who are living in the last days at the end of the age, it says. So if it's true that we're living in the last days at the end of the age and history is for our instruction, we should learn from history. And it says history repeats itself. You know why cars have horns? Not to play music, <laughs> though it is one note of music, maybe. Maybe two notes, I can't do two notes. But, but it typically is not played or heard as music. It often is an alarm or a warning sometimes. Sometimes a friendly hello. Sometimes it's like an outburst of anger. <clears throat> which is not the intended purpose of the horn, but it is to warn. You know why fire trucks have sirens? Again, it's not intended to be heard as musical, though people like me hear music in everything. I hear it as a note. Yeah. <laughs> Silly. But the siren, again, is a warning. There's a fire emergency, and they must quickly respond. So move out of the way. <laughs> Did you ever hear a big ship's ho big horn? <laughs> wow. Same thing. Warning. So the Old Testament has warnings for us in it. Kind of like when you see a traffic light turn from green to yellow. Whoa. Better slow down, even stop or a stop sign ahead. Don't ignore it. We're going to start right in with our Bible reading today. Uh, what? You, you already have it? Good job. Whoa. Okay, well, you know how this goes. I have mine, and it's orange, <laughs> and I love it. Nice. Reminds me of my bud, Peter. Anyway, if you have your Bible, if you don't, we'll wait a couple seconds. Go ahead and get your Bible. Okay, we got to go ahead. You, you know, at 1030 Sunday morning, you, you're ready, and, you know, bring your Bible. Anyway, hold up your Bible if you have it, and say this with me. This Bible will keep me from sin, or sin will keep me from this Bible. Say it again. This Bible will keep me from sin, or sin will keep me from this Bible. May it not be so. So, I have a helper here who's going to read for us today from uh, Matthew chapter 24, verse 32 to 36. Take it away, Josiah. Matthew 24, verses 32 through 36. Now learn a lesson from the fig tree. When it branches bud and its leaves and its leaves begin to sprout, you know that summer is near. In the same way, when you see all these things, you know that his return is very near. Right at the door, I tell you the truth: this generation will not pass from the scene until all these things take place. Heaven and earth will disappear, but my words will never disappear. However, no one knows the day or the hour when these things will happen. Not even the eight not even the angels in heaven or the son himself only the father knows hey that's matthew chapter 24 verse 32 3 4 5 and 6 read the whole chapter sometime and in here jesus tells us to watch for the signs of his return even before he leaves he's saying to watch for the signs of his return does not compute does not compute does not compute. Danger! No, Will Robinson! Danger! Yes, this robot would help young Will Robinson to know when danger was near. But you have your Bible, God's Word, to you to warn you, and parents, and teachers, and your knower. And if you have committed your life to follow Jesus, you have the Holy Spirit of God living in you. Yeah, wow. So is your knower tuned to the things of God? You can tune it to the things of God, and you should. So if you read the end of 
Genesis, the last recorded words of Joseph, son of Jacob, governor of Egypt, he said in Genesis chapter 50, verse 24 and 5, well, I'll let Van read it. Van's here to read it for us. So take it away, Van. Soon I will die, Joseph told his brothers, but God will surely come to help you and lead you out of the land of Egypt. He will bring you back to the land he solemnly promised to give to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. Then Joseph made his brothers swear an oath, and he said, When God comes to help you and lead you back, you must take my bones with you. Genesis chapter 50, verse 24 and 25. Good job, Van. Thanks for that. You're awesome. Good job reading. Verse 24 says, and Joseph is speaking, he says, I'm about to die. But God, remember last week, but God, but God will surely come to you and lead you up from this land to the land he swore an oath to give to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And Joseph made the sons of Israel swear an oath. He said, God will surely come to you. Then you must carry my bones up from this place. So everything was still pretty good for the people of Israel for now. <laughs> so then Joseph and that entire generation died. And that ends the book of Genesis. And then the Old Testament book of Exodus begins with like a continuation of a story rather than another beginning. And it names for us Joseph's family members who came to Egypt where Joseph was the governor so that he could be near them and he could provide for them. It says after the death of Joseph, a new pharaoh or a new king came into power who didn't know Joseph. He didn't care either. And he didn't know Joseph's extended family either. The generations that came after Joseph were there still in Egypt, which, by the way, was not the promised land, the land that God promised to Abraham, even to his children's children. So the Israelites, the descendants of Jacob, Jacob's children's children's children, <laughs> were still there in Egypt, working and, and raising families of children, many children, so many that the new king or pharaoh was fearful. They had become so many people, more of them than the people of Egypt even. And if the pharaoh was fearful that if an enemy came and made war with Egypt, that the Israelites would join with the enemy and take over the land of Egypt. So pharaoh got together with his local government officials and decided that they would um, force the Israelite people, God's chosen people, to become slaves. Forced labor, forcing them to work, very hard work, building cities in Egypt for the Pharaoh. Wow. But then it gets worse. Well, I hate to stop there, but tune in next week to find out what happens. You know, the stories in the Bible are really not about the characters involved, but about God himself involving himself, showing himself, God interacting with his people, Old and New Testament, and, and even still today. Remember our prisoner teaching stuff? We were not then, and are not now prisoners, but how quickly things changed for God's chosen people. Everything was really good, and then suddenly slaves. Sounds like a good plot for a TV show or something. <laughs> what would you do if things changed that quickly for us? Well, the Israelites cried out to God, asking that he would send a deliverer to deliver them. And as I look at the signs around us, I'm looking for Jesus to come our deliverer, it appears it could be very soon. Will you be ready? Are you looking at the signs? Are you talking to Jesus? Asking his forgiveness? 
asking for his plan and his power. He loves you and he's crazy about you. And he made a special place for us called heaven and he wants us to live with him forever. Yeah, he does. <laughs> he's calling you. If you can hear him, say yes to him today. Well, that's all we're going to get into today. We can go farther and we will next week. We'll go back uh, into Exodus a little bit further, but right now, um, the Israelites are slaves in Egypt. What was once a really good thing is now mm, not so good. But God will see that then too. Hey, if you have um, prayer requests, you can put them in the mail. You can send me an email. You can put them in the comments. And uh, I sure would be glad to pray with you, for you. But let's pray and then we can close. Um, so close your eyes and close your mouth. And if it helps to close your hands. So let's pray. Jesus, we love you. We thank you for your word. Your word is truth. Whether we um, agree with it or agree to it or not, it stands true and you stand faithful um, even when we're not so help us father uh, more and more to become like jesus speaking your truth in love uh, to everyone you send our way and we look for your coming may it be soon but till then help us to be workers for you speaking uh, to others about your great love that they could come to the place you're preparing for us called heaven. We so look forward to it, but help us to be working until you come. We help us. I ask you and I thank you in Jesus' name. Say amen. Amen. Well, let's do our little closing song here, and then uh, we can be done for the day. I need you to help me again, please. Um, let's just start right at the top of the <laughs> right at the top of the list a singer Jesus loves Kaylee Jesus Jesus loves Kaylee yes he does sing Briley yes he does Jesus Jesus loves Briley yes he does sing Chelsea and Clayton yes he does Jesus Jesus loves Chelsea and Clayton yes he does yes he does and he wants them to love him too. Sing Kendall and Josiah. Jesus, Jesus loves Kendall and Josiah. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. Annalisa McKenzie. Jesus, Jesus loves Annalisa McKenzie. Yes, he does. Yes, sing Jamie in Ireland. Jesus, Jesus loves Jamie in Ireland. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. And he wants them to love him too. Let's do a couple more. Van, Yvette, and Colby. Jesus, Jesus loves Van, Yvette, and Colby. Yes, he does. How about Dennis, Diane, and, Cyan and Peter? Jesus, Jesus loves Dennis, Cyan, and Peter. Yes, he does. Sing everybody. Yes, he does. Jesus, Jesus loves everybody. Yes, he does. Oh, yes, he does. And he wants them to love him too. He wants them to love him too and he wants them to love him too <laughs> I don't know if that's better or worse but there you have it I love you guys miss you guys looking forward to seeing you soon and uh, be praying and tell your friends about Jesus all right God bless you